Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 13th of July with me, Patrick Munley. FX markets head into this new week with uh, an open mind about uh, the economic recovery we're witnessing. The tone has been mildly positive, however, the equ with equity, credit and commodity markets heavily bid, the strong rally in Chinese equities and the US dollar yuan level breaking seven, uh, this has also added additional support to the risk on tone uh, mood that could be supported further if Thursday's release of Chinese second quarter GDP does not disappoint. Tone would also be helped by above consensus prints in the US for June industrial production and June retail sales. The week will also see the June US NFIB and CPI data. The higher frequency soft US data on retail sales and unemployment is not quite as encouraging as the headline figures suggest. With this in mind, the market will closely watch out for any guidance provided by US banks as earnings season kicks into high gear on Tuesday. Any significant higher provisioning for souring loans or lowering in guidance um, could stand to insert some more equity volatility into the equation. One final point to consider is that uh, the 15th of July marks the new US federal tax deadline, having been extended from the 15th of April back in March. This may see some tightening in US dollar cash and repo markets and slightly firmer short-end US dollar rates, providing what I consider to be a temporary uh, bullish factor for the US dollar. So if we move to the charts now, and we saw a turnaround in terms of the dollar into the back end of last week. If we can hold this 96.20 area, I'm now looking for a move up to the 98 zone uh, where we've got the descending trend line resistance coming in. Certainly be looking for bearish reversal patterns in this area to target and move back down to test the range support at 95.71 and in extension the uh, 94.60s. However, if we take out um, Thursday's low at the 96.20, then I'd look for a retest of range support down to 95.70. Uh, the highlight of the week in terms of the Eurozone will be the EU's leaders' summit starting Friday and whether it concludes with an agreement on the 750 billion euro recovery fund. Uh, I'd take a cautiously optimistic view on this, uh, thinking that concessions already agreed on the joint funding of the program should lead to an eventual deal. As always, these discussions can be noisy, expect a lot of uh, side briefings going on, which could add to volatility during the week. Less volatility should emerge from the European Central Bank meeting and press conference on Thursday, where I anticipate a period of reflection is likely to continue. In terms of the data calendar, We'll see Eurozone May Industrial Production and the July German ZEW index. From a technical perspective, the Euro dollar we saw reversal on Thursday and some additional selling uh, on Friday. Whilst we hold this 1360 uh, range uh, resistance, I'm now anticipating a move down to test the quality objective at the 111.30. Only a close back through 113.70 would negate this uh, downside corrective move and then I'd be looking for 114.20 en route to an ultimate 115 test. Uh, in Sterling, uh, UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak's fiscal support announcements did have a one-off positive impact on Sterling, with Sterling in fact reacting ahead of the event to the leaked details rather than the actual announcement. With this now fully priced in, the upside for sterling should be fairly limited from here. Don't expect any progress in the Brexit talks next week or over the summer as a whole, meaning that positive catalysts for sterling upside should be rather scarce. It would really probably be a euro rally rather than, a, than sterling strength that would push the uh, sterling higher from here. On the data front, a headline CPI on Wednesday should stay at around half a percent and is likely to stay around that level for the duration of the summer. The unemployment rate released on Thursday may tick marginally higher, but its rise has so far been limited given the furlough scheme. We look 
uh, for a rise in unemployment in the coming months uh, following already announced job cuts as more firms announce layoffs. None of these data points should have a meaningful impact on sterling given that they're backward looking nature. From a technical perspective, um, sterling has come into uh, range resistance now, this 126.70. As this contains the upside, I'm now looking for a move down to test range support and the quality objective at 121.40. However, if we did take out last week's highs at 126.70, then look for an immediate test of stops above 128. Uh, in Japan, Wednesday's Bank of Japan policy meeting will be the local highlight of the week. Uh, don't expect any changes to their elaborate QE and yield curve control policy. Moves by the BOJ to support the corporate bond market do seem to be paying dividends, however, where corporate bond issuance by Japanese companies did surge in June. There also seems little need to alter the yield curve control measures where the recent 10 to 30 JGB curve steepening trend has started to reverse. From a technical perspective, as the dollar yen can, holds below uh, this 108.20 area, I'm looking for a test of the equality objective down towards 104.50. If we do take out uh, 108.10 on a closing basis, then I'd look for a test of range resistance up to 109.80. Finally, uh, the Aussie dollar, it's been a bit of a laggard in G10 space despite risk on moods coming from China with good Chinese sentiment normally uh, disproportionately benefiting the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar compared to other pro-cyclical currencies as a severe COVID-19 wave in Australia has forced Victoria into a lockdown. As we learned in the past few months, there is a lag between the start of a lockdown and when we actually start to see cases slowing. So the Aussie may continue uh, to feel the pressure into the week ahead. Uh, from data perspective, it's going to be uh, the Labour report, uh, which will be closely watched. Investors are likely expecting a rebound in the employment figures to the plus 100k region. The impact on the Aussie, however, may be limited by the notion that fresh lockdown measures are already neutralizing any improvements seen in June. And so from a technical perspective with the Australian dollar, as we hold, still hold below the 70 level, I'm looking now for an equality objective test down towards 67.30. However, if we do take out 70 on a closing basis, then we can look for 70.60 as the next upside objective ahead of range resistance at 72.80. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 13th of July.